History has not been gentle to Greece. This small peninsula and its islands have witnessed a relentless parade of conquerors. Romans, Goths, Slavs, Franks, Venetians, and Ottomans, each ruling for centuries. Logic would suggest that each of these waves of history would have reshaped the Greek population, leaving a distinct genetic layer. But modern science has uncovered a stunning paradox. Despite thousands of years of invasion, migration, and empire, the core genetic profile of the Greek people has remained remarkably, almost defiantly, unchanged. How is this possible? How did the Greek gene pool withstand the tides of history when so many others were washed away? The story of Greek genetic stability begins at its source. Ancient DNA analysis from Mycenaean skeletons, the civilization of Agamemnon and the Trojan War, has provided the baseline. When scientists compared this 3,500-year-old DNA to that of modern Greeks, they found an incredible continuity. The Mycenaeans themselves were a mixture of the earlier Neolithic farmers who had arrived from Anatolia and a smaller component of migrants from the Eurasian steppe. This specific genetic recipe, established in the Bronze Age, became the foundational, unchanging core of the Greek population. It is the original Greek genetic signature, and it has persisted through every subsequent historical event. The Roman conquest of Greece was a cultural and political earthquake. Greek art, philosophy, and slaves flooded into Rome, but genetically, it was a surprisingly one-way street. While Roman culture was deeply Hellenized, the genetic impact of Romans on Greece was minimal. Why? The Roman Empire was a vast, multi-ethnic state. The administrators, soldiers, and traders who came to Greece were not primarily from Italy. They were drawn from all over the empire, the Balkans, Anatolia, the Levant, this meant there was no single, large, genetically distinct population that migrated to Greece. Instead of a massive influx of Roman DNA, there was a trickle of diverse genes from across the empire, which was absorbed into the much larger established Greek population without altering its fundamental character. One of the most debated chapters is the Slavic migration into the Byzantine Empire between the 6th and 8th centuries AD. Historical sources describe large-scale Slavic settlements in Greece, even suggesting they repopulated the entire Peloponnese. If any event should have reshaped Greek DNA, this was it. But genetics tells a different, more nuanced story. The Slavic genetic signature is present in Greece, but it is a gradient. It is strongest in the north of the country and becomes progressively weaker as you move south. It did not replace the existing population it blended with it. The existing Greek population was large enough and resilient enough to integrate this new genetic component without being overwhelmed. The Slavic migration was a significant addition, not a replacement, leaving the Mycenaean core fully recognizable. For nearly 400 years, Greece was part of the Ottoman Empire. This was a long period of coexistence, yet it left a surprisingly light genetic footprint. The reason lies in social structure, not demography. The Ottoman millet system organized society by religious affiliation. Greeks were part of the Orthodox Christian millet, a self-governing community. Intermarriage with the Muslim ruling class was socially and religiously discouraged for both sides. While there was inevitable some mixin, the strong social and religious barriers acted as a powerful genetic firewall. The two populations lived side by side for centuries, but remained largely genetically distinct. The Ottoman period was a case of cultural and political domination, not genetic assimilation. Beyond history, geography is the silent guardian of Greek DNA. Greece is a country of formidable natural defenses. Its rugged mountains and scattered archipelago of islands created countless natural refuges. When invaders came, they typically controlled the coasts and the plains. The interior villages and remote islands were often bypassed. In these isolated pockets, the ancient gene pool was preserved, untouched by the newcomers. When the invaders eventually receded, these isolated populations would expand and recolonize the lowlands, effectively resetting the genetic landscape to its original state. This process repeated itself for millennia ensuring that the foundational ancestry was never lost. 
So what is the final verdict from the DNA? The Greek people are not pure in any mythical sense. Their genome contains traces of all the peoples who have ever set foot on their land, Romans, Slavs, and others. But the key word is traces. The core genetic structure, established by the Mycenaeans, comprises the overwhelming majority of their ancestry. The later additions are like spices added to a stew. They alter the flavor slightly, but the primary ingredients remain the same. This is a story of a large, resilient population absorbing influences without being fundamentally transformed. It is a story of continuity triumphing over change. The DNA of modern Greece is a living link to the world of Homer and Pericles. It proves that cultural and genetic legacy can be incredibly resilient. The Greek people today are the direct biological descendants of the very people who built the Parthenon, who fought at Marathon, and who laid the foundations of Western civilization. Their genetic story is one of the most compelling examples of continuity in human history. It reminds us that while empires rise and fall and cultures blend and change, the deepest currents of our ancestry can flow uninterrupted for thousands of years. If you are fascinated by how our genes carry the secrets of ancient history, please subscribe to the Footcast. We are on a mission to uncover the deepest stories of our past, and your support helps us bring these incredible narratives to light. What other population deserves a deep genetic dive? Let us know in the comments. Share this video to spread the science. And as always, thank you for watching.